So up until now, really kind of throughout the lessons, we've really just been focusing on Euro dollar, uh, just primarily because I think it's quite useful for us to continuously be sort of studying that same section of price action, just so as we go through each lessons and we learn new concepts and then we build upon each of those concepts, we can then keep going back to that same price chart and you know building that layer upon layer of confluence. And you guys can just kind of you know start to get really familiar with it and see how you know sort of you can still read price action right with just one concept, but then how we're you know bringing those layers in to increase our strike rate, uh, refinement, and risk reward, and so on. But I think now we're kind of you know we're starting to really put all of those pieces together now. I think it's useful to go through different pairs, different sections of price action, just so now we can really practice putting that all together. Um, and just for you to see that you know, these really are useful, universal concepts. They literally are, you know, understanding really, truly how the market really moves um, and you can apply it to every instrument. Now, that said, what you will find as you sort of potentially play around with other instruments, you, you test, um, you know, other asset classes, even potentially right outside of currencies. Although these cell concepts apply, there will always generally be slight nuances and differences sort of in just how uh, potentially the behavior and characteristics of how that potential asset class or currency pair may move compared to one that you are already previously used to. So that is why generally I do say, especially when you're starting out to just focus on one pair uh, and get very used to, to um, you know, how that pair moves. Some pairs you may find that you can be quite aggressive and sort of strict, not strict, but aggressive and more tight in how you mark out your structure. So in terms of swing highs and swing lows, you would actually look at, you know, you'd really zoom in and kind of pick, for instance, this weekly chart, we just zoom in, you would, um, for instance, call all of these swing pullbacks in a weekly chart, right? And that would be fine. And in other pairs, you actually may find that you have more success when you're a bit loose with your with your swing structure. So you would define, for instance, that as your swing high, that is your swing low, this would just be a weekly complex pullback. And then that would be one whole bearish leg down, right? Which would mean that this is just one pullback. And we've actually stayed bearish the entire time. Now, of course, that's still going to differ between trader to trader. But also some of you may find that you may actually need to kind of alter your approach slightly between different pairs. But of course, that will just come again with time and experience and just whatever way you like to do things. But anyway, let's dive into a pretty recent um, price action and trade example that we have on Aussie dollar um, that we, yeah, we've had at the current time. Um, and let's just quickly run through the high time frame. So weekly chart, if we completely zoom out and we kind of just have a quick look at what's going on, the data feed on Forex.com doesn't really go back that far to 2006. Um, but roughly we can see, right, we took out this low. We obviously took whatever external range of quality was below the low, but slightly tapped into a demand zone from prior years. And then that fueled this large movement to the upside, right? Then we come back down again, being in a pretty long-term uh, bearish trend. And then around the uh, pandemic at the start of 2020, we swept this large low here and it had a very, very aggressive sort of V, almost sharp vertical retrace um, back up there towards the highs. So we came up into this uh, extreme weekly supply zone at the top, which is obviously a very strong supply zone. One, because it's the kind of the origin of this sort of large long-term move, right? That took out these lows here, all of this trend line liquidity. It has plenty of inducement in front of it, right? With all of these uh, weekly highs there. Um, obviously, as we came into it, we built some liquidity too. Uh, but what did it also do is very, very subtle. But if we actually just zoom in and then we mark out the prior high, and then we drag that line across. Uh, I don't think that will appear on my settings. We'll just have to quickly flick through, mess around with this, make this visible on the weekly. Bear with, there we go. Hop back up to the weekly. And what you can see, just as we know with one of the main reasons why we use liquidity is to identify those zones that are created um, as they take liquidity as they, as they are created, right? We have a nice sweep zone right at the top of structure with plenty of inducement. Um, yeah, always a very high poverty area to look for either a weekly bearish pullback or even potentially, um, you know, that full on reversal. Or if you view this as one whole leg down, then simply that was just a pullback up into the extreme to form a lower high, right? Change of character. And now we are potentially trending to the downside. Okay, I'm a little bit more, uh, don't use the word aggressive, so I wouldn't necessarily call it aggressive, but I'm a bit more sort of tight with the way that I would define structure. That for me would have been the most recent high, that would have been that lower low, and then as we came up here, uh, and we took that high, that for me would have been a higher high, then we come up, we pull back here, 
and then I'm pretty much counting that as one weekly leg. Now you could be even you know, a bit more aggressive than me and you could count that as a weekly pullback and a break of the high and that would be more than valid as well but for me it's a bit more um, of a daily pullback in that in that case. So with current price action um, I'm essentially viewing that uh, as a weekly pullback to this level and then we have a very clear weekly uh, uh, demand zone down here right refined to that last candle before the buy that went on to break this weekly high uh, over here which I believe yeah it's going to go down to the daily I don't generally draw on my weekly breaks of structure but there we go we know price took out the high regardless so now where we are within price action we've come into this demand zone and um, this is a pretty decent area to look for a potential um, higher low or you know of course if you're viewing price as bearish then you can still use this as a bullish opportunity to look for price to pull back potentially up into some of these regions here to then look for that lower high um, and beyond now one thing else you notice about this uh, demand zone is it did actually take liquidity there all right okay i'll have to put that down to the daily and we'll go drop down and look to the daily but that's where we are with the current price section we've come down into this nice daily zone so if we take a look at how that zone was created Pretty similar to the one that we looked at on euro dollar right we had these equal lows and then price swept those lows here and then that fueled the move to break up higher okay to then get that larger sort of weekly break of structure so now we're coming back into this demand zone what we can start to do is refine our weekly zone right as we go down through the time frames to potentially see where price may react so there's a couple sort of zones that i'd be looking here from the daily chart perspective i would be looking at this wick right that took out that low that swept that low that then led to the break of the high of course you can take the whole candle and um, for me the the body of that candle was already mitigated anyway when we wicked back down but also remember if you're being very very kind of strict with your definition of demand zones um technically it shouldn't be a buy before a buy it should be a sell before a buy so you can kind of use that knowledge to refine to the wick uh, using that fractal refinement right for the bearish um lower time frame move that then led to that break of structure so that would be yeah, a very, very strong um, demand zone that I would definitely like to see price come into to look for a buy. But where also do we have? Well, if we kind of just go back a little bit, remember I always say look left and try and paint the kind of the story a little bit to build price action to see how it actually arrived at the point that you were looking at. So we obviously had this daily supply zone, not the best in the world. It kind of only took out that minor low there, right? It never actually took out the swing low. It only led to a wick break, but it is still valid supply nonetheless. Nonetheless. What happened is price came into it, right? With this wick, you can then see that it reacted down, right? With that large doji, and then we came back up and then wicked break there. So I would definitely be looking um, at this large uh, daily wick zone here as a potential zone as well. Obviously, it's pretty big there, um, but yeah, definitely a more than valid zone. So obviously, it's quite big, so we can drop down another time frame uh, and potentially look to to refine it even more but before we jump down let's just take a quick look at potential targets on the daily where well, we have this sort of most recent supply that led to this day daily break of structure here <clears throat> excuse me uh that daily boss there right so that would kind of be our first target because of course we could look for longs within here and it could just be a daily pullback to reject somewhere within this range supply here right and then we could continue to come lower before potentially then going right sweeping that liquidity before seeing the real move so that's kind of would be our sort of first daily target but of course with the potential that the weekly could be pulling back up even higher up to around these regions so let's try and refine those daily and weekly demand zones even more just to help us with accuracy now if it kind of you know you're not entirely sure what's the purpose of us kind of trying to refine these and, and and make these zones as small as possible if you know we're not necessarily looking to trade them directly because you know if we're always going to just wait for for price to come in and then start to break structure to the upside so on and so forth why do we need to refine it well good question i guess but the, the reason why we refine it is because the lower you go down on your time frames right so let's say we want to look for that first uh, say m1 that one minute change of character that one minute flip to then get an entry Right, that's going to be happening loads and loads and loads of times so to avoid yourself you know entering in a full signal where price does that but it's just a five minute pullback to continue lower and you keep trying to catch a falling knife and take tons and tons of losses before the real move goes because this is a huge sort of you know both of these daily zones are in the weekly zone so we really try to nail it down to two zones here but even this daily zone is massive right so the more refined we can get these zones then when price actually comes into them that means we can um, trade that first m1 change of character right or m5 whatever time frame you want to use with a lot more confidence right because it's very likely then that price is actually going to move from that refined zone so digging into these daily zones here on the four hour chart what can we see 
that we can refine the zones um, even more. Definitely like that for our inside bar. Make sure I cover the lower lip wick, I should say, as possible. Um, we can see you know that tapped into here, um, and that was the origin of the move that then led to that flip and that break of structure. Um, probably also keep an eye on this zone as well, as that was the one that kind of last point of demand that did actually lead to the break of structure. And then um, this one has already been mitigated. You could include the wick, but I probably prefer this four hours zone at that stage, but it's pretty much the exact same size as the daily refined wick that we've done. So I'll just leave that there. And you can either drag these across or a quick tip. If you open them up, I believe you can, yeah, extend right like that and it'll go straight across if you just wish to do so. But um, the way my chart OCD works, I kind of like the zone to end where I'm actually looking at. So yeah, I'm just gonna drag those across. Anyway, so we can already see that that four hour zone has been disrespected. So we can delete that one now uh, and concentrate on <coughs> excuse me, on this demand level uh, down here. So like I was saying, at this stage, daily and four hour chart is very uh, bearish, but we're coming into right this pretty strong weekly uh, demand zone here, right? That took liquidity below that low and led to a pretty decent move there. So at a minimum, we're looking for a bit of a weekly bounce, but obviously we can start to play um, a much larger move. You can see that daily zone as well. Um, coupled, a couple of daily zones that we're looking at. We've now come into about the EQ of this daily zone and um, that led to the flip and break of structure there. So that's a decent area as well, which we've then refined to this uh, inside bar, right? That was the origin of the move that led to the flip and the break of structure. And then we have that sweep zone just below, which is also nice. So at the stage, what I would then be doing is dropping down to my lower time frames, all right? And then just waiting for uh, price to start to show bullish signs as we come into um, our demand zones. Now, of course, you can be doing this on the M1, you can do this on any time frame that you want, but as I always usually say, M15 is a pretty good time frame to kind of um, be a little bit more, uh, I guess, safer, right? Wait for a little bit more, um, be a bit more conservative and wait for, for price to start to show those bullish signs. So we obviously built up a big collection of equal lows there. We've broke down um, below those, so we can expect a bit of a pullback. I'm now pulling back into supply and going lower. So at this point, the M15 is very much bearish, right? But now that we've pulled into our refined demand, now we can really start to pay attention to price. And instead of necessarily don't have to wait for a bullish trend change, but you can just wait for that M15 change of character, right? If you wanna be um, a bit more aggressive. So I'm just gonna take price nice and slowly now, and let's keep an eye of what's going on, okay? So this is where you have to be really kind of um, uh, paying attention to details. Now, another thing as well, if I haven't kind of mentioned it enough so far, is if you look at the time at the bottom, right, this is around sort of 9 a.m. Uh, London time. So uh, UTC plus one, as you can see down here, right? That's the time zone my charts are set to. Now, this is obviously a bang in the middle of London session, and this is a great time to be looking for trading um, these major pairs, right? As this is generally when those high probability moves will occur, and you won't get full signals because volume is generally high, okay? So what have we done? We've kind of swept these relatively equal lows. Of course, they don't have to be uh, pitch perfect, um, but it's a nice bit of inducement coming down into our four hour zone. Now, change of character for me, right? We've had a movement down. This next candle, it doesn't matter that it's bullish. What matters is that it never broke this candle's low, right? So the 745 low, if you look up on the top left, right, this will tell you where the decimal coordinates are of each candle. So if we go on that first candle, see how the low is 71152. And then the next candle we move across, the low is 71156. So of course that means it never took out that low. So that counts as a minor pullback. And then we took that low. So because we took the low, that means this then is a minor high. So this is kind of how, if I'm looking at this live market and I'm waiting for that first M15 change of character, I will literally just keep um, drawing my line and I'll keep dragging it down and dragging it down and dragging it down until we get that first change of character, right? So another thing as well, what do we have is we have some M15 supply here, right? Very, very minor supply, but it is there nonetheless. So let's draw this on. Okay, now starting to react, which is good. Remember, we always wanna see that reaction. Um, pricing now gonna try and take out the low. Does it take out the low? Not quite just yet. Still battling between buyers and sellers, and then boom. Not only do we get that change of character, but we also get, just drag this one down, that reaction fell, right? That's the reaction point where my cursor is now. We have now broken up above that and we have the change of character. So we can show that as a sort of failed reaction, right? So what caused the failed reaction? Well, basically anywhere within this uh, cell to buy that led to the break of structure. So technically you could look to buy anywhere within this range and maybe we want to refine it a little bit more and we want to look at this sort of last candle here, right? Because if you think about what you'd probably see on the M1 is you would have had supply here that then initiated down, pricing came back up into that supply, 
it then sold off with this doji, but then it got bullish again, right? So that's the last pivot, that's the last bit of demand that led to that breaker structure and led to that change of character. So if you wanted to do so, or if you wanted to wait for price to come down into here on the M1 again, you could then drop down to the M1, right? If, if and when price comes in here, and then again, look for the same entry model, and then you could buy with a fair amount of confirmation, or literally you can just you know take this on the M15, um, and you don't even need to be that refined, right? You can enter on the distal, or you could enter right on the EQ to try and you know, pretty much just instantly double your risk reward. But of course you run the risk of not being tagged in. So let's just be conservative and see uh, how this plays out. So, all right, just tagged in there. So what you can see is you would not have been tagged in if you took the EQ, but that's fine. Now, let's say you want to see a bit more confirmation. You didn't just want to change your character, but you wanted to see a bit more, maybe kind of, you know, another sort of minor structure go here. And you wanted to see this high go, which we have now seen. So now we're, we're really starting to see bullish momentum kick in. Maybe now you've seen everything you want to see and you've got a bit more confidence. Um, so let's, you know, pretend we're not in this trade for the minute. Or what I'll do is I'll just kind of drag this out of the way. Um, actually, I should just delete it so we can kind of focus on price action here. All right, so that was your first kind of entry, the more aggressive one, but now we've had a bit more convincing break of structure. What else did we also have, right? We had this minor area of supply, price came into it, it reacted, it failed to form a lower low, we broke up above the reaction, right? Um, and now we are up above and we have that change of character. So obviously we can um, we can buy anywhere within that range or we can kind of refine it to this candle here and then potentially look for an entry. Exact same thing again, right? You can enter on the distal, you could enter it on the EQ, just make sure it stops below, or you could wait for price to come in here and then on the M1, look for a more refined entry. So let's see if we get tagged in. All right, boom, price drops around for a bit and then we get in. So even just looking at the M15 price action, what do we have here? All right, I can just see probably on the M1 is we probably had that change of character back into the demand and then that would have been your nice little refined confirmation entry within there and then you would be off, right? And that's kind of just a couple of ways that you could have um, gone in and positioned yourself long just using the M15 chart alone, right? Um, obviously you wanna wait for at least that M15 to then make a higher high before starting to, to think about kind of managing that trade. You need to give the chance, the trade a chance whoops, to play out, so didn't mean to go that far, head back to the M15. Done that on the wrong window, there we go, back here, here we are. All right, okay, so M15 is taken off. Now I'm not gonna go through every kind of single bit of price action here and look at every single opportunity to scale in um, or get another entry if you hadn't taken it, but let's just try and play, play price forward a little bit here. And remember that kind of first real high time frame target is to play the daily pullback up in and around this region. But we can also keep an eye on some potential four hour levels. So um, let's keep an eye on those aren, 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 along the way, was the words I was trying to look for there. <clears throat> um, and then, you know, kind of have this inside buy, but it was mitigated. Then we have these wicks here. So we would have had that buy before the sell. So, you know, there's a few wicks here you can kind of keep a rough eye on, but this is what I'm saying, right? You don't always have to be you know, perfect at picking these zones. What you can do is just let price action show you the way. Which one does price action um, kind of want to um, start to pull back from? And then you can just basically wait for those changes of character uh, and yeah, just basically view it that way and let price action uh, lead you the way. So let's play this forward a little bit. All right, we're just trending pretty nicely to the upside. Nothing too interesting as of yet in terms of what, I, what essentially I'm looking for here, right, is signals that the four hour chart um, kind of wants to pull back. So kind of seen this along the way, you know, we won't dive into every single trade example, but kind of how, you know, you want to be thinking this as price would be moving in the live market is obviously looking at old areas of supply on whatever time frame you're looking at to see how they initiate pullbacks, but more so to see, you know, where are they potentially, um, you know, forming potential flip zones because we had the reaction, right? This was the pullback. And then if you wanted to scale in or potentially look for higher lows, right? This could be an area in which you could look to buy. And that's essentially how I would use old, old zones, right, in, in new trends. See, there you go. Um, and there would be another opportunity to potentially look to buy, even though you're high up on the leg, right? When we're getting that higher time frame zone mitigated, momentum is often very strong. And that is where you can get away with being more aggressive, right? Buying quite high up in the leg. We've now obviously pushed up above that four hour zone as well. So just gonna delete that for now, but you can see, right, this essentially would be, if I move this across, we have um, M15, excuse me, demand. That has now um, kind of been the origin of that move. Of course, you could take the whole range as well, but let's just drag that across potentially for, uh, yeah, future price action. Now pushing up a little bit higher pulling back into demand. Let's see, are we gonna get that change of character to the downside? Are we gonna break down? Um, looks like that low is just about holding. Okay, it swept that low, broken back up again. So we're just kind of having runs on liquidity here. 
now we're pushing up in towards that four hour zone so now what i'm really looking for is just to see price action kind of really start to break down um at this point so we've kind of seen we've had a clear bearish trend we can't we're kind of starting to sustain that now right so we've taken out this low we pull back in we've broken another low we've come back in right supplies holding we've come down supplies holding again we've come down right so now we're starting to really get that bearish order flow so let's take a quicker look at how the four hour chart is looking okay so this is a really good reaction right from our daily uh weekly and whoops four hour zone just going to drag that across training view has been a little bit glitchy and this is what i really like as well you see how sharp essentially that big v-shaped move is right um, you know that shows real bullish intent stepping into the market and whenever you see a v-shaped move come back to your supply zone that's not really a good sign um, that your supply zones are going to hold you might get a bit of a reaction but obviously um, yeah we're looking pretty bullish at the moment <coughs> excuse me so at the moment we've come into four hour supply so what do we expect we expect a potential pullback you know we can start to get that four hour change of character and we may start to pull back and then at any point we want to be looking for where that four hour higher low is going to form so we can then look for a pro trend move to either first position ourselves in right if we hadn't already taken this or look for potential more scalings to really build on this position right because at a minimum we're expecting the daily to pull back but with the potential right we could get that weekly move and obviously the daily then could switch bullish so we're still very very early on the move here so obviously we could look at price coming all the way back to the origin um and you know i would look at that if price came back that deep but it's probably not that likely uh, especially at the start of the move with this amount of momentum so Clear four hour zone would be this area here. All right, let's just be a bit more unrefined and look at the whole range because we would obviously look for lower time frame confirmations um, as we get into here. And then we also kind of have, you know, this move here, all right, where price has moved into it, pulled back and gone. It's not super clear on the four hour chart, so I probably wouldn't draw that on. Um, but let's have a look in the 15 minute. Yeah, that's kind of you know, roughly that area that we were looking at before, right? Came into this area of supply, it pulled back and then broke up higher. So. What I'll be looking for is kind of any of these demand zones for price to come in and see how potentially they start to react. Now, even if you went using supply and demand, as I always say, remember, you don't actually need it. Of course, it helps us, but all you're looking for, right, is for bullish signs to start coming to the market again. M15's obviously switched bearish to facilitate that four hour pullback. We want to catch that four hour higher low. How do we do that? You know, what do we use for confirmation? We wait for the M15 to start to switch bullish uh, and so show potential bullish signs, okay? so. What time is this around? This is kind of around the Asian session, right? Middle of the morning um, in terms of London time. And then we start to break stretch upside. So this is around 7 a.m. sort of Frankfurt open. Um, this is where I'd definitely be at my desk at this point. And I'll be going to myself, okay, right? We obviously switched bearish to have that pullback. We're now switching bullish with a hell of a lot of intent on the M15, right? That's nearly a vertical move. Now, even if you hadn't have drawn this zone on your right and you hadn't you know, been kind of you know following price action the whole time and leaving your zones drawn on, you know, this is a point I always try and make is if you come to your charts, obviously session time in good time and you want to be looking to catch the high low and you just see this move here and you had nothing drawn on just look left go okay what, what did this move originate from okay there's obviously this um candle here that you know took the size here and then you can you know work out and say oh actually you know it took it caused that four hour supply reaction to fail yeah that's a pretty good level um you know it had uh you know it took liquidity from those equal lows there um that's a pretty decent um sweep zone it's mitigated the prior range so actually if we follow the bullish order flow this was the last sell to buy range that hadn't been mitigated right for price to come down to that we had then this what massive support support floor here right that's another um real decent bit of inducement you know you can even have that kind of descending trend line like that right we just know tons and tons of liquidity is going to be building um below here uh, what else do we have we have big equal highs up here to target Right, so that's a pretty poorly formed swing high. So what do I mean by that? Generally, you want to see a nice swing high like this, right? Sharp move down, sharp, so sharp move up, sharp move down. Here it's kind of just, you know, messed around and then slowly drift away. What does that mean? It means it's leaving tons of liquidity for price to target. Um, you know, we also have this descending uh, trend line here as well, right? Which price is then obviously trying to sweep. Uh, we also have that descending trend line here. You know, you can draw it on everywhere, right? It's, it's not super important to do this. It's just to understand kind of what is actually going on there so we sweep all of that we move into this real nice last zone but more importantly it's the aggressive in and out showing big money is in there but we don't just look for aggressive moves what else do we wait for we wait for a change of character right and in this case pretty much i would probably classify that just have a look highs yeah that's that would be a bearish trend that for me would be a bullish trend change not even just a change of character whoops wrong one so now the m15 has switched bullish what else what also happened well we had this pretty clear 
uh, M15 supply zone. Right, this buy before the sell that led to the break of these lows here. Price came into it, reacted. Remember how key the reaction is that we need to see. And then we can draw that reaction there where that reaction then ended up failing. And then we have moved, right? to the upside. So now I've seen pretty much everything I want to see to give me high confidence that the four hour high low is in place. Yes, we haven't pulled back to where that kind of clear four hour zone was, but remember we don't have to. This for me is super, super high probability. Regardless of all of that, you can see the price actions going in um, and I'll be pretty confident now trying to look for potential buying opportunities. Of course, we don't want to just buy straight away. We want to look for price to pull back. So where are some potential you know, areas price could go back to it could come all the way back down to the origin down here right that's a pretty decent move you know there's even kind of a fractal zone here where we had this movement down right you can see price pull back up it came to the low price came back into it right it reacted and then we moved up so yeah that would be um, a pretty valid zone as well but you know what do we know about zone refinements um, we want to look for ones right that you know took liquidity um, and that actually led to where you know that 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 flip, that last point of um, supply that failed and where we got that trend change. So yes, these are valid and if price came down to here, I would definitely um, be more than keen to look at them, but I want to kind of concentrate on more recently where that move came in, right? So we can see that reaction, we can see it failed, so we could take that entire reaction like this or we could refine it, right, down to the bottom here, right? Because what happened? Price took the liquidity, right, from below here and that led to that break of structure. Obviously now we've already tapped into that a little bit so we can refine that to the wick here. And then what does that give us? That gives us some inducement above the zone, All right? Now we can look to set a limit entry order below here because it's very unlikely price is gonna to wanna to break this low here um, if we are going to continue, right? So you could probably be even get away with 2.5 pips up there, more than enough buffer just below that zone there and that is looking like a pretty decent move. So we've taken liquidity, we have inducement, we have caused a failed reaction, right? We've caused supply to demand, uh, supply to flip to demand, and that led to a trend change. So all systems go to then look for that entry for price to come in. And then, yeah, I mean, when you get the zones right and you pick the right POIs, um, you know, it's not surprising that you end up seeing those large moves as all of those orders are filled. And um, obviously we had a bit of inducement um, on top of that, it's quite far away from the zone, so I wouldn't really be, you know, that concern with it, but you can just see what's going on here, right? The lows get taken, big sweep. Um, but yeah, that's just pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, pretty much a picture perfect example of how we combine those liquidity concepts with supply and demand, with market structure, how we position ourselves, understanding what's going on as price is putting back, what we want to see to confirm that the four hour high low is in place, and then starting to, you know, obviously identify multiple valid areas of demand, but if we want to start to kind of really refine those, right, we look for the ones that took liquidity, the ones that have inducement in front of, um, and that's how we can get, yeah, pretty um, accurate results. Obviously, you've got, you know, just up to the next sort of swing high there, you've got 18R, but of course, if, if you have done all of that hard work to position yourselves in the first four, four hour higher low, right, in what could be a weekly move, you are golden. You want to try and hold on to this with as much volume on your trade as possible and really, you know, try and swing this higher, right? Um, and just see really, yeah, just how far you can push this because this can have a lot of potential, especially when we start to take out, um, you know, that first real daily supply zone. And now we've had a daily higher high. Um, yeah, now obviously what we expect is a daily pullback for price to form a daily higher low, but you should be pretty golden and, and price not coming much further than that and continuing so on and so forth. So yeah, kind of just wanted to go over that. That was a really nice, a clean trade example um, of everything then there, combining all of the concepts that we use right um, with liquidity now into our market structure into our structural and flip zones and just really using them to to add those extra refinements but of course i will say again it's really not necessary liquidity um you know if you're at a point where you're finding it confusing or it's making you really kind of scratch your head and doubt zones that you're looking at before just leave it for now concentrate purely just on supply and demand and market structure um but yeah as you go along um you start to kind of focus on this a little bit more it can really start to help you um, yeah, just potentially stay out of some traps and give you a bit more confidence for zones that you are picking if you see, yeah, it, it, them do those liquidity sweeps and have inducement in front of the zone. So I'll leave that there. Hopefully you guys took some value from that and I will see you in the next one.